Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I have the pleasure to introduce you to Bam from Imaginando, beat maker or music maker production studio. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Additionally, if you would like to participate in the giveaway, please do follow the instruction contained in the video description. Thank you again. So what is Bam? Well, Bun is not a dough because traditionally it doesn't have the same features of a dough, like for example, an audio track. It's a groove box style app. And when you think about groove box, a lot of them comes to mind, particularly in the iOS space. So let's have a look at some of them before we go deeper into um, the tutorial, which I would say is the first tutorial of a series of tutorials. So I'm planning to do a fantastic new series of tutorials for BAM. So the first one that come um, to mind is uh, BitSynth. And, um, and of course, these can be a competitor and um, it's a, a groove box. But I would say that BAM is much more advanced when it actually comes to um, feature set and also presentation. Another one that comes to mind is probably Bliss Groove Box. But again, it has been out for a while. It works very well, but it doesn't, um, Bliss Groove Box doesn't have the same number of features and not the same style as well as a UI. It's not as modern as BAM, of course, which has just been released. Another one that comes to mind, of course, uh, is um, Korg Gadget which of course um, is a fantastic tool. Um, but I would say that um, Gadget is um, a little bit unique. It's been out for a while. It does have a lot of different engines in terms of synths, for example. But again, I, to some extent, BAM is a little bit better when it comes to mixing and particularly particularly effects, and of course, it is uh, also an, a UV-free host as well. Another one that comes to mind, of course, is Pure Acid from Jim Audio, fantastic app. Um, and definitely, this is a competitor. Again, as I will uh, show you in a moment, BAM actually, I think, is um, um, in, a, in a different lead, I think, if, at least from my point of view. But nevertheless, uh, um, Pure Acid is so good as well. Another one is um, um, Loopy Pro, but again, Loopy Pro is uh, much, much better when it comes to actually audio and recorded from audience and those uh, features around loops that um, is not really the same categories and say the same category that BAM is on. Korg Electribe um, Wave uh, is, of course, one competitor and um, I would say that um, um, I like the interface of uh, Electribe Wave, but uh, I think um, um, BAM has a different type of feature set, which makes it quite unique as well. The next one, of course, uh, is Groove Rider. Who doesn't know about Groove Rider GR16? It's a fantastic um, groove box, and uh, I have done uh, uh, several tutorials um, for it, so it's a fantastic app, so I recommend that you use it. But again, as you will see in a moment, um, I think uh, BAM brings all that expertise from Imaginando from other applications like, for example, LK that they produced, that their famous clip launcher, which has been used quite a while, um, particularly uh, if you use AOM, it's a fantastic app. Then, of course, another one could be Egoist as well, Groove in a box. I would say the interface of Egoist is a little bit probably um, old now and needs a little bit of, of a revamp, but nevertheless, a good, uh, a good app. But of course, the big one is uh, Drumbo. And uh, I know about Drumbo. I've done a few tutorials um, now, uh, 100 uh, tutorials, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I would say that Drembo um, has some similarity, some overlapping, of course, with BAM, but Drembo has that power of a modularity that uh, uh, BAM doesn't have. Nevertheless, when it comes to actually um, 
bam, you see the interface is so nice and uh, have a look at it. It is there now. It's really, really nice. And in a way, the UI reminds me of a little bit of a modern UI that you find, for example, on low tone of flow tones in terms of the controls as well. But then again, you find similarity as well in terms, for example, of the top left menu here, the way that it works and the style of the fonts, etc., which reminds you, of course, of the application from Imaginando and rightly so because of the usability of, of code. So it's, um, it's really nice that you can see here the menu where you access your profile, your media, your settings about and help. And remember, you have a quite a, a nice um, help. It is not a help contained in a PDF file or a, a manual. It's an help that uh, is hosted on a website. And that sometimes can become a little bit probably not what uh, you want. That is why I, in terms of accessing it, of course, because it redirects you to that website. So that is why I hope videos like um, this one will uh, help you, of course, to, um, to learn about BAM. So this is the first video. Uh, in a series of uh, tutorials in the series. And um, and uh, I'm going to give you an introduction, really, of what BAM looks like. So starting from the top, you have these uh, um, bar with different controls, as you can see. It's, um, you can have, you can see straight away, you have option for MIDI loan, learn. You have um, a clock source here, which of course it's because it's running as a standalone application. Therefore, you have the tempo as well, which um, which you can set. And then you have access here. If you click where it says project, you have access to this project um, view where you go. You can load your project. You have uh, also access to banks here, as you can see, factory, local, and favorites uh, as well, which you can define here. Uh, clicking on the star, so really great. And also you can search, which is really really straightforward. And you have a default um, project, which uh, is always handy. One of the things that I particularly uh, probably don't like is that these controls here on the left hand side are still there when I'm in the project view, um, because it means that you can still click on them like so, and you can see the changes uh, um, behind the project view. But I suppose it's um, not the end of the world, but for me, I would have probably chosen um, a different I would have chosen to disable the controls over there. You can click on the project again to exit that view. You can add the project, save it, and then you can undo as well, okay, which is really nice. And if you made some modification to the project, of course, you have the ability to go back to the, um, to the default project, to the original uh, project. You can move up and down between different projects, and I can move to the next one. You can see it's loading. Uh, the loading could be a little bit faster in my view. Uh, the iPad here that I'm using, it's an iPad Pro M1. And um, so even going back to the default project, it's still taking a little bit of time and not too long. It's actually, it's okay. But um, when I notice when the project is complex, perhaps, uh, uh, you know, rem um, some optimization uh, could be done. And remember, this is the first release um, official release for BAM, so it will improve a lot. It is a 16 tracks, um, groove box and music production. You can see the channel here in the middle, one to 16 and a master there as well. And up here on the top right, you see access here uh, to a browser um, and where you can actually uh, browse, uh, for example, factory, um, um, samples and presets, and you can also record which is absolutely great, um, you know, in terms of recording uh, samples and then import them um, as well. So it's um, it's um, it's really good. And you can see also access to some of the engine as well, which is really nice. You can see you can go up and down. You can see you can see um, it says zero eight eighty style of engine for clap, cowbell, hi hat, kick, snare etc etc but you can see also drum sync for noise and an oscillator as well so it's uh, it's great it's it's really nice and then of course you can play here at the bottom so you can see the sample being uh, um being played as well right when the, uh when the, of course you select um, you select one
Now, um, let's exit um, the uh, that view. Uh, at the top here, you see this um, rack um, view or device view. You have uh, triggers here. Uh, you have modulator where you can host an LFO or an envelope generator. Let me show you the LFO there. You can see the LFO here, and you can add the course parameter to modulate. And you can remove it like so. It's asking you always if you're okay with that. You can uh, add um, an envelope generator as well. Really nice as well in, in the ways that it works. You can see the interface, how clean it is. And by the way, if you double click on the name modulator, it collapses that uh, view of the modulator. Same on trigger as well. The, and if you double click, you can, of course, uh, reopen it or expand it. And the trigger section is to change notes, uh, uh, setting for the notes, the velocity default setting, things like that. The modulator is, uh, of course, to add the LFO and the envelope. And then you have this engine here, which I'm going to expand on. And here you can click, click on the plus sign and you can add an audio unit, uh, a sampler, an oscillator, a drum synth, Hoffman, a monosynth, noise, uh, and then some of those instruments from the 80s, the kicks, snare, clack, um, clap, tom, conga, hi-hat, cowbell. You can have an audio input and also a MIDI out. Right, a lot of different options. And of course, if you go back right at the top, you can also search, which, uh, which is great. And then, of course, you choose one, like, for example, the Semper, and, and it will load it. There it is. So you can see how you can see why the interface reminds me a little bit of uh, low tone or some of the modern apps, uh, which which is great. Of course, you can change the parameters here. You can click on the exit, on the X to exit, um, um, of course, and then you can click again on it to reopen that window. Right? You can click on the menu here again, select none if you don't want anything again, or you can click on the menu again and choose, for example, why not an audio unit? And you can say give you the selection of the audio unit themselves, which you can load. Or, for example, you can choose uh, an oscillator and um, look how many controls. Really nice. And when I will do a full tutorial for it. Um, really, really nice. And... Um, and of course, uh, moving on, you have a drum synth as well, and uh, which um, which which is great, um, really nice, and um, and so on and so forth. And um, you know, you have these uh, Hoffman um, monosynth as well, and you can see you can move the window as well around, which is really nice. And in a moment, I will uh, um, show you what it sounds like. And then here. Um, you have you can choose effects, eleven effects. Um, you can choose from audio unit, bit reduction, chorus, compressor, delay, equalizer, filter, a parameter EQ, a reverb, a saturator, a stereo enhancer. So you have really really a lot. And then you have you have information parameters for your track. Okay, so your track um, rack, so you can mute solo. You have send effects, uh, two of them. You can adjust the pound, the volume, and so on and so forth. Now, before I continue on the explanation, it's good to give you a bit of sense of what it sounds like. Otherwise, uh, I'll talk a lot, in, a lot in the video. So let's go to project here and let's choose the first one. It will say uh, the current patch has changed um, or has changes. So are you sure you want to load a different project? We say yes. Now, you can see straight away that um, there's more now on the screen. There is a sampler. There is a parametric EQ, and so there is a lot more. Also in the middle, you can see more. You can see the first view for the metrics, which has some uh, clips, um, of course. And uh, this is where you create clips and scenes. Now, at the bottom here, you have the transport control. So let's click play and let's listen.
So you can see why it's called a beat production or music maker. It's really a music production studio. And it's nice that at the bottom it shows you also in real time what is happening for each of the channel and the instrument that have been loaded. This first view is the metrics where you have different clips and you have scenes which you can click on on them to change them or they move between one to the others. You can see they were repeated uh, four times here. And um, and this reminds me very much of LK, the club launcher from uh, Imaginando. Uh, similar controls, similar styles. You see the clips are being played. It tells you where you are, which is really nice. But let's go to the next project and let's uh, listen to more examples. Uh, let's go for it. Okay, as you can see, I was moving between these different views. The, the top one is the metrics. So you have scenes and clips that you can launch. You can select tracks. You can select individual clips. You can select scenes. You can configure them. Then you have the second one, this timeline is, is step sequencer up to 256 steps. Really, really fantastic. You can have a lot of fun with this. And, um, the, the next one is really the automation. And here you can see automation is being recorded. And uh, you've seen in a previous project, there was automation as well, which was shown in some of the parameters. And then you have these composer. It's particularly your piano roll with all the different options, up and down, octave, etc., which we will uh, explain in, uh, in one of the next tutorials. And then a mixer. Uh, look how nice this mixer uh, looks. It's fantastic. Now, let's choose another project. Let's have more fun because there are lots of projects. And as I said, it's really a nice groove box. The quality is so nice. And you can see how nice the rendering is in uh, on these controls on the, on the mixer and even up here on the uh, master. So so great, so nice. But let's uh, choose again another project. Let's have uh, more fun. After all, this is an introductory tutorial.
Nice, really great. Now, one other thing I also like of BAM is these controls at the bottom here. You can click here to disable the top uh, part of the screen and to hide it, and the same at the bottom. So you can have so much more space on the screen, which uh, the workflow compared to Drumbo, for example, is so much easier on, on BAM. Of course, BAM doesn't have the power of modularity that Drumbo has. So in Drumbo, you can spend hours and hours to create unique things and you can play with cables and connection. You can't do that with BAM. But the workflow in BAM is really neat, is really, really nice. So you can, uh, you know, adjust even by different views. For example, I'm on the step sequencer. Uh, look, I can maximize so quickly the view. Um, same here for automation. The piano roll, I want to maximize it, and I can do that straight away. And so, so easy to do. You see a button here for the shift, which you can find also on the right-hand side. It reminds, again, it reminds you of uh, LK. So um, that that's great. That's great because if you have used LK before, you find yourself straight at home um, with the app. Again, let's choose another project. I want to give you more and more in terms of what you can what you can hear. You can see again undo, redo. You can see the percentage here of the uh, of CPU used transport control for the coding plane, stop, latch function, setting for meeting, overall settings, etc. That's And as type of application is one of those where I also respond to click and hold. Like in this case, I um, I pressed and held the button on that clip and it gives you option for copy and paste, mute, clear, import and uh, export as well. You can see here for tracks, you can solo, you can mute, you can arm for recording up here. You can have access to the keyboard here in terms of changing it to part as well, so you can audition as well, the different sound, which, which is great. So, um, you can go up and down octave here, you have a panic button there, you can track again to go back to the previous view and of course you can audition as well sounds like this okay it's, it's, it's really it's really nice as um as a groove box you can see also saves the settings which is nice as you move I hope in the future they might be adding additional tracks as well so that we it can become, you know, um, a tools where you have very, very complex music production beyond the 16th and perhaps um, a bar here 
um, a scrolling bar will appear with some arrows to move to the next one and the previous one. I hope that is something that they bring. I also hope that they bring us some additional option to manage uh, external um, um, a screen um, so that you can, uh, for example, move one particular view to an external monitor uh, like so. So I think things like that would be very, very nice. But as I have to, I have to say, as a, as a first version... So great, uh, so, so nice, and you have so many different projects here uh, to choose from. Um, so um, yeah, let's um, let's go for this techno staba. Why not? Let's click play. You can see how um, neat it is as well as an engine as um, as you move from one scene to the next here on the right hand side um you can see not a glitch not artifacts as well it's um yeah it's um it's really nice it's um it works um it works uh, incredibly well for a first uh, release i'm uh, i'm amazed in terms of quality so it's uh, it's superb and of course, you can also do a modulation on the audio unit as well, which, um, which again, I was not expecting to see that in the first uh, in the first release. Um, click and do here. I wanted to show you. You can go back to the original one, uh, like so, which um, which which is great. Let's uh, add an um, audio um, unit. Um, I don't know. Um, let's um, add um, Animug, like so. And there, uh, and there it is. And you click up here, right? And then you can do learn as well. Again, so that is already there for you to do learning. And of course, MIDI learn, of course. This is where you can unload it as well, which is really nice. And um, this is where you can change. You can choose the preset. So it's very easy to access the preset as well for an audio unit. It's really straightforward. You can unload it. Just click there. So, so straightforward. You don't need a big, strong, um, you know, intense uh, training um, for learning. You can do MIDI mapping, um, of course, and you have a lot of different options here for general, for performance um, that you can change um, uh, for the app itself. And, um, and of course, um, setting for uh, MIDI, uh, where this is where you, you have your mapping manager and um, this is where you can export. So for example, you can export your song or you can export the scene as well. Um, you know, and um, made, you have option for MIDI, row, post effect, everything. So um, 
We'll see all of those options in the next uh, coming tutorial. Okay, I hope you enjoyed um, the initial overview of BUM. It's a fantastic uh, groove box uh, style app. It's a great music production, one of the best. Uh, alongside Drumbo, I wouldn't consider it as a replacement for Drumbo, but I would consider it one of those where perhaps you can also use Drumbo in conjunction uh, with uh, BUM. I hope you enjoyed and see you next time. Bye.